my sixth grade. Today we are going to be talking about measuring matter and we just got started with this unit. You guys now know your problem that we're going to be working on and gathering information to help us solve and that problem is what is the best way to measure our ingredients for a recipe? And so one of those kind of questions that we talked about uh, that fell underneath that big problem was well what are different ways that we can measure things and uh, specifically those ingredients. So we're going to look at three different types of um, measurements and uh, those things that we're going to be looking at are going to be weight, mass, and volume. So uh, this video is really going to be focusing on mass and weight. A lot of you guys came in and you were like, okay, well, I know that mass and weight are different. I remember that from fifth grade, but you couldn't really give me all of the specifics and how they were different. So first thing that we really want to kind of focus on when we're trying to decide what is important to put down in our notes when a teacher is giving a presentation, go back and look at the objectives. That's going to tell you what's really, really important to keep in your notes. So I know I'm going to look for anything related to mass and weight. I have to be able to define the term mass, so I'm looking for a definition. I'm looking for defining the term weight, definition for weight. I don't need volume, so I'm going to skip that. And then I need to be able to explain how mass and weight are affected by location, whatever that might mean. And then I have to be able to list the tool used to measure mass. And then um, that's going to be it that we're going to be covering in this really first section of video notes. So keep those back in the back of your mind. Definition for mass, definition for weight, tools that we're using for mass, and then also how are mass and weight affected by location. So going forward here, like I said, we're really going to focus on mass and weight in this video. We'll talk about volume later. Uh, first off is, you know, what is mass and what is weight? Uh, in our everyday language, we kind of use weight a lot. And in our everyday language, we're kind of wrong with what we mean by weight. Uh, so we've been dealing with matter up until this point, all atoms and molecules. And uh, mass is really measuring how much matter is in an object. So, I have a little cube here. It's made out of some sort of metal. You'll get to figure that out later in the year, what metal it's made out of. But I put a picture uh, over here that's kind of representing uh, all of the atoms that are making up this cube. And so we're really kind of focusing on, well, how much matter is in this cube? That's what we're measuring when we measure mass. Okay, so mass measures matter. It's a really easy alliteration to help you remember um, those keywords there. So mass measures matter. And then if we look at weight, weight is all about the pull of gravity on an object. So the image here is I kind of put an astronaut out in space. Uh, what do we know about the gravity in space? There is none. So this guy's kind of like free floating out there with no gravity. Now, what we know about gravity on Earth, if I hold this football here and I drop it, ooh, it drops down because there's going to be a pull of gravity and everything's getting pulled towards the Earth. That's why we just don't float away. So weight is actually measuring the pull of gravity on an object. Okay, so two very, very different things. Mass is measuring matter and weight is measuring gravity. So we knew that we had to get those definitions down in our notes. So at this point, I'm going to go over and get my notes set up. And if you look here, this is um, a new unit. So you guys can kind of decide how you want to organize your notes. Some of you, if you're typing your notes, I know you create a new document for each unit. So I would put measuring matter notes up top. Some of you are continuing and making one long document, and that's fine. I would just probably put in the center here. And I'm going to make my font large so it's easier for you to see, but you guys do not need to make your font 24. I uh, Notice I click my middle justification button, center align, and I would put measuring matter notes. Then I'm going to click enter. Now, uh, because mass and weight are so easily confused and kind of used back and forth, I'm actually going to take my notes in a little bit of a different format. And I'm going to take them in two columns. So I'm going to come up to table and I'm going to insert a table and put two columns there. 
And then I like um, my titles for my tables to always be in the center. You don't have to do this, but I'm just picky on how I like my notes organized. And I'm going to press that center align button again, and I'm going to start off with mass over here and weight over here. And then I'm going to come back, and I want this left align. And I like bullet points. You guys know that I like bullet points. So um, mass, it's, it measures, let's say it's a measurement for how much matter is in an object. Okay, and then we said what that keyword was, which is going to be matter. So I'm going to underline that. And then weight, I'm going to left align and bullet point again. A measurement of how much gravity, or sorry, a measurement of the pull of gravity on an object. And I realized I messed up over here. It's a measurement of not for. Okay, and then I'm going to underline my keyword, which my keyword was gravity, just so I remember that. Okay, now I do want to talk about one other thing here quickly, and this isn't, you're not going to be assessed over this, but we're going to be using units with measurements. You know that after every single number in science class, you have to have a unit. It's the same way in math. Okay, so um, especially because we are going to be dealing with a lot of different measurements, and so having the proper units tells us which way you're actually measuring. Um, so I'm not going to literally like make you list the units, but you do have to be able to use these units correctly as we're calculating um, this and like all of these different measurements. So I do want you to get these down in your notes. Units that we're using for large items with mass is going to be the kilogram, which is kg. And units that we're going to be using for small items is going to be gram, or we abbreviate that with a g. So let's just get that in our notes. Oh, and we'll look at units for weight while we're here too. The units that we're going to use for weight, it's going to be called the Newton after Sir Isaac Newton. Uh, he kind of was the one that started leading the discussion on gravity. So it makes sense that we're kind of giving him a little like nod, I guess, or recognition um, since weight measures gravity. So I'm just going to come over here, a new bullet point, and I'm going to put units equal kilogram kg or gram g and then units equal newton notice how these are lowercase but newton is capitalized that's because newton is actually after sir isaac newton it's a name i think that's why they capitalize it there so just a small little thing okay so we know these units here. You'll kind of see them pop up over the numbers, and I'll kind of address this throughout. Um, but now that we kind of have that figured out, our next ICANN statement that we really needed to focus on was what, how are mass and weight affected by location? So location for us is usually just Earth, right? So I have my football. It has a certain amount of matter in it. We'll say that this football is about, let's just say like 120 grams. Okay, so I have 120 grams for my football. That's how much matter is in this object. If I were to change my location and take this football to my house, okay, so I'm going to Finley, did the amount of matter making it up change? No. I didn't add any matter to it. It's still the same exact football. So my mass would still be 120 grams. Now let's think weight. Okay, so the pull of gravity. So I'm in Van Buren, drop my football, it falls. Okay, so definitely gravity is acting upon it. I go home, drop my football, it's going to fall at the same exact rate. Gravity, there's still the same amount of gravity. That's not changing anywhere on Earth. 
But we really have to start thinking more about uh, science as scientists. And we are going to not only be talking about Earth, especially if you're an astronomer and you're looking at uh, the rest of the universe. If you're an astrophysicist, that means you're also studying the ways of the universe as well. Or if you're an astronaut, you might be working on the International Space Station. So the ISS is actually orbiting Earth right now. Uh, and we watched a video earlier in the year. We actually saw those scientists up there floating. And uh, so what would be the pull of gravity up on um, the International Space Station? There's zero gravity. We're floating. So you actually feel like you're weightless because there is no gravity. So if we're thinking from a scientist standpoint, my mass here in my classroom would be 120 grams. If I took my football up to the International Space Station with me, what's going to happen to the matter? Nothing, because my football isn't changing. I'm not adding any matter to it. Now, if I took my football here and I dropped it, it drops because Earth's gravity is pulling it down to the surface of Earth. So there's definitely going to be gravity on it. But if I take my football up to the International Space Station and I were to drop it, it would actually kind of like float in midair. I wish I could pretend to make this look like it's floating. Okay. It would float in midair. So it would actually be weightless. So we would say that the weight of my football would be zero. Okay. So uh, if you look at this with an image, of an astronaut. Our mass of our astronaut on Earth is 120 kilograms. The weight, he would be 1,200 newtons. If we take our astronaut to the moon, his mass would be 120 kilograms. His weight would only be 200 newtons. So what we end up finding out is if you go to something that's smaller than Earth, there's going to be less gravity. So you're going to weigh less. If we were to go someplace larger than Earth, I want you to kind of figure out what would happen. So we're going to take a look at that in a second. Okay, so if we head back over to our notes, we need to kind of talk about what happens to our location. So mass does not change based on location in the universe. Weight, however, will change. Weight does change based on location in the universe. So if we look, I'm going to push a tab and get that kind of over. An example would be on Earth, if we were, what was that example? I'm not going to be able to remember. So on Earth, if we were 1,200 newtons, On the moon, we would only be 200 newtons. So our weight is a lot less. Whereas on Earth, our mass would be 120 kilograms. On the moon, we're not adding any matter to us. Okay, so we would still be 120 kilograms. Now my question to you is, what would our weight, what would the astronaut's weight be in space? In space, it would be zero newtons. Next question is mass. What would our astronaut's mass be in space on the International Space Station? In space, we would still be 120 kilograms because it hasn't, we haven't added or taken away any matter from us. So really, scientists prefer to use mass because no matter where they're at in the universe, it's always going to stay the same. So I want you to kind of take a break. This is kind of a long video notes, so it's nice to kind of take a break here. Um, and I want you to look at what your mass would be on other planets. So if you click on the link in Google Classroom where it says your mass on other planets, you can actually enter what your weight is here on Earth, and then um, it will tell you what your weight would be on all of these different kind of like celestial bodies. And then there is an explanation. If you want it kind of in other words, you can read um, down here too. So 
you can go ahead and kind of take a break and then come back to the video notes when you're ready, but I'm going to keep going. Okay, so now that we know that our mass on other planets uh, kind of changes because of the gravity, would your mass change? No, notice it did not say mass, it said weight. So one important thing that we have to really look at here is if we're going to be measuring our mass, we need to know what tool we're actually going to use. So these are a whole bunch of different tools, and no matter what, how they look different, they're all known as balances. So a mass, the tool that's um, ba or measuring mass is going to be a balance. Weight is where we're using a spring scale. So you don't have to necessarily know how to use the tools um, to measure weight because we're not going to focus on it. Scientists don't really care about weight. We care about mass. We're going to focus on knowing how um, to use this tool right here. It's called a triple beam balance. And you can see there's a whole bunch of different types of balances. This is the triple beam. Notice it has three beams. There's also a double beam. It has two beams. This one right here is kind of old school, and it's where you would put an object that you know its mass and then compare it to an object that you don't know its mass. This over here is a digital, be or a digital balance, and we do get to use these. If you can prove to me that you know how to use a triple beam balance, you get to graduate to the digital balances, which is nice because you just set your object on there and then it gives you your number. And then these, you actually might recognize from the doctor's office. So kind of old school doctors might still have the um, balance with the beams there when you stand on here. And then uh, if your doctor is really advanced with technology, they might have a digital balance that you just kind of step on and then it gives them your mass. So we really are looking at our mass here and figuring that out. So if we go to our notes, the tool that we use to measure mass is going to be a balance. And for us specifically, we're going to use triple beam balance. Okay, so uh, with that, that kind of ends uh, everything that we need to know for mass and weight. Uh, we have our definitions. You know how mass and weight are going to be different based on location, and we know the tool that we're going to be using um, to measure mass. So, uh, at this point, the next step on your to-do list is you're going to be uh, trying to label the different parts of a triple beam balance so that you can use those correctly, and then you are actually going to be creating your own tutorial on how to use a triple beam balance.